to um, ask the First Minister when he will next meet the Secretary of State for Scotland. Uh, I have no plans to meet the Secretary of State for Scotland in the near future. Annabel Gildy. Presiding officer, last week the First Minister's own economic advisers indicated there was a crisis in the funding of our Scottish universities and they supported a graduate contribution. Last night, University of Scotland confirmed they see a fair graduate contribution as necessary and ominously for the First Minister they also said the time for talking is over. Now I know there is a green paper this afternoon and I'm not looking for detail but can I ask the First Minister does he at least accept the principle of a graduate, not a student, but a graduate contribution? Yes or no? Yes, Minister. Well, we'll let uh, Michael Russell uh, spell out the Green Paper th this afternoon, and then uh, Annabel Goldie will be able to address uh, the uh, ideas in the Green Paper and the Scottish solution that's coming forward. Uh, it will be quite different from the position that Annabel Goldie's party has imposed south of the border. I, I can't believe that even the Scottish Conservative Party and certainly not the Scottish Liberal Democrats, believe that is the route we should go round down. Uh, Annabel Goldie shouldn't misrepresent the position of Scotland's universities. Uh, Professor Anton Muscatelli, somebody quoted by Annabel Goldie in the past, uh, we are pleased that the Scottish Government has recognised the importance of universities at a time of major demands on the public finances. Uh, support has come from the, the students of Scotland. Uh, given the cuts we've seen in the rest of the UK, this is great news for students, a result the Scottish Government should be certainly proud of, referring, of course, to, to John Swinney's budget proposals. Uh, obviously, the decision south of the border to withdraw the Government from university finance and to place the burden virtually entirely on the students and families of England, uh, I think is a disastrously bad decision. And Annabel Goldie will find when Michael Russell outlines the uh, discussion paper, the Green Paper, later this afternoon, that we have certainly ruled out going down that disastrous road. Annabel Goldie. Well, presiding officer, I think it's ludicrous that the Scottish Government can run around briefing the media ahead of a Green Paper, but the First Minister can't even answer a simple question yeah. of principle in this Parliament. And he directs me to Mr Russell. Heaven help us. Just listen to what Mike Russell was saying on the radio this morning. Firstly, there isn't a crisis. Then he admits there is a funding gap. Then he says the money is already there. And then he says it will all be sorted out after the election. Quite simply, quite simply, Alex Salmond is putting his party skin before his country's needs because it's all about limping through to me. Now, he may criticise me, but my party is prepared to face the facts, not hide from the truth. We are ready to do what needs to be done, and the time for talking is over. So instead of another year of fudge, evasion and delay, will the First Minister give certainty, leadership and a solution? First Minister. Well, I would uh, suggest Annabel Goldie should be aware of following a colleague south of the border. And south of the border, they've got that human shield of the Liberal Democrats. Uh, I doubt if the Scottish Conservatives will be able to rely on the Liberal Democrats to take the flag for them uh, in Scotland. Uh, Annabel Goldie says we should acquaint ourselves with the facts. I absolutely agree. So perhaps you should pass them on uh, to David Willocks, uh, the University Minister in the House of Commons, uh, a Conservative who was once reputed to have two brains, if I remember correctly. But he declared on the 9th of December, as he was attacking the Scottish position, he said, quote, more Scottish students study at English universities than English universities students study at Scottish universities. In fact, 12,000 Scottish students study in England, 22,000 English students study in Scotland. Maybe one of his brains wasn't functioning when he made that particular remark. Now, all I say to Annabel Goldie, if she relies on the misinformation, the misunderstanding, the total misapprehension of the traditions of Scottish education, which is so evident in the Tory government at Westminster, then we would take Scotland down a disastrous course eh, if we followed that action south of the border. Luckily, we have a parliament and a government which is determined to find the right solution for Scotland. Question three, Tavis Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I ask the First Minister what issues will be discussed at the next meeting of his Cabinet? First Minister. Issues are of importance to the people of Scotland. Tavis Scott. Standing officer, uh, as temperatures again plunge, is the First Minister aware that four in ten Scottish householders, especially older people, are worried about the cost of heating their homes this winter? Another third are already struggling with their bills. As people face eye-watering hikes in their heating bills, can he tell me how much his government are going to spend on the home insulation scheme and the energy assistance package? Mr. Minister. Well, I, I just heard Dalek Neil uh, uh, explaining that very point just a, a few seconds ago. The substantial investment in both energy efficiency and 
and energy helpline and the assistance package in Scotland far more comparably than south of the border, which uh, I think is a, an important fact that when we face the exigencies of climate, then this government and this parliament protects the people who are most vulnerable to the full extent of our ability to do so. If I could gently suggest to Tavi Scott, if he, his party were pursuing a different fiscal policy, then there would be more resources to apply to many vital needs across Scotland. Tavi Scott. Also, does the First Minister recognise that the average household energy bill is more than £1,200? That's nearly double, double the bills people were paying five years ago. Four of the big six energy companies have announced price rises averaging 6%, double and treble the rate of inflation. That energy cartel is blaming a 25% rise in wholesale gas prices since the spring. But as the First Minister knows, the big falls in wholesale prices before May were never passed on to customers. Isn't this market rigged? Isn't it big business versus the consumer? The First Minister knows that the energy regulator Ofgem is investigating the prices we all pay. They say that energy companies have increased their profit margins from £65 to £90 pounds on every home. Order! Order. Too much noise around the chamber. Will the First Minister prepare evidence to give to Ofgem, prepare evidence to give to Ofgem, presiding officer, about the extra costs that Scottish households are facing? First Minister. I have to confess that you know, the, these are matters which Tavis Scott draws to our attention, which I, I think are, are well made uh, and there are points which should be progressed with the energy companies. Can I also gently point out to him that uh, Danny Alexander, Vince Cable and Chris Hewn <laughs> All Liberal Democrats are the relevant ministers who have responsibility for competition and energy policy. However, if Tavis Scott were to revert to his previous position of calm and plus, then perhaps these vital responsibilities could be transferred to this Parliament and this energy-rich country could provide heating for all of its citizens. I take a supplementary from Duncan McNeill. Presiding officer, this weekend will see the third anniversary of the capsizing of the flying Phantom tugboat, which claimed the lives of two of my constituents, Stephen Humphreys and Eric Blackley, and a third crew member, Robert Cameron, constituent of my colleague Trish Godman. Three years on, and still the bereaved families have no date for a fatal accident inquiry. I'm sure the First Minister will appreciate the frustration of Helen Humphreys, widow of Stephen, when she says she believes the system is grinding her down. Will the First Minister agree to meet with the families to reassure them that the Scottish Government's support for such an inquiry, which the families require, and to ensure that the health and safety lessons from this tragedy are learned and acted upon? First Minister. I will gladly meet with the uh, members' constituents. Uh, I know that Duncan Meal is aware that, that matters of fatal accident inquiry are matters for the law officers. Uh, I think it should be possible to, uh, to arrange for Duncan McNeill to to meet the officers as well. There is no difficulty in a constituency member meeting the officers, but he will understand that the decision on when to order uh, a fatal accident inquiry does rest with the officers in Scotland. But if it would be helpful to his constituents, uh, then I will be